We're in Clearwater, Florida today. Uh, we're on the beach and we're talking about our November expenses, which is our fifth month on the loop. Um, pretty busy week this last week. Um, made the crossing, the Gulf crossing, just two days ago. And we went from, um, where did we go from? Apalachicola. Apalachicola here to Clearwater. We did 220 miles in one go. Nautical miles. And the Wii is very generous there. I drove the car around, but there'll be more on that on upcoming episodes. Yeah, so uh, it's pretty cool. We're on the beach. Uh, yesterday it was um, over 20 degrees. Today it's, I think it's around 15 degrees and it's a bit breezy. It's kind of funny. We're here on the beach and there are people literally stripped down to their swimming trunks and there are people like us who have light jackets like I just have sweater and shirt pants on there's lots of shorts I think some people are really uh, going for the warm weather vibe which works for me we need to wait a second there's a helicopter going over yeah so I think we're ready to start we are ready to start so in November we, we anchored um, a little bit we had six days at anchor in November and 13 days at a dock and then 10 days um, hauled out of the water so it felt like we did a lot of anchoring it did feel like it, it did feel like it, it the numbers are yeah so yeah. the anchoring we did was on the was on the rivers so, so it was a different kind of anchoring but it was quite um, quite enjoyable except for one or two times um, one or two moments rather uh, so in November we um, spent uh, about the same on groceries, about a thousand dollars, thousand fifty-one Canadian, which is seven hundred and sixty-seven American, and um, we're not able to really bring that number down very much. What we have noticed is um, that when we stop places and need to go shopping, most of the time, I'd say eighty percent of the time, it's either at a very small local grocery store, which is quite expensive, or the closest grocery store to us when we stop might be. A chain grocery store but something like Publix which is quite expensive so we're finding that we are we're going to these stores and buying a little bit more expensive food because it's closer and we just really don't feel we have a choice so a little higher than we normally would ha ha you know have our expenses for groceries if we were home in Toronto it is what it is so our eating out costs are about the same as they have been hovering around eleven hundred dollars and coming down the rivers we often would have very long days and if we were at a marina, which we were, you know, about 13 times, then um, we would go out for dinner if it was seven, eight at night by the time we got the boat in and got things kind of ready for the next morning. So we did actually eat out more than I thought we would coming down the rivers, but no more than any other month. Did you want to talk about dock fees? So dock fees this month were $521 and that really just reflects that on the river, dock fees were pretty inexpensive. Um, how many days did you figure we docked? 13. So 13 days docking, oftentimes we were paying $1 to $1.50 a foot. It was just very affordable. The, the state parks were about a dollar a foot, so there were a couple times we did that. And then the regular marinas just weren't that expensive coming down the rivers. I think the most we paid was $2 a foot, Yeah. maybe a little bit more. And varying degrees of amenities with that, but um, what's not included in that number is the 10 days that we were hauled out and we were charged $30 a day for having the boat out of the water in the yard. And we actually lived on the boat for those 10 days, but we paid for that in early December, so that'll show up in December's numbers. Boat fuel, I'll let you do that. It's about um, about the same as docking fees. Uh, so boat fuel is $520 and that we just kept moving. <laughs> well, I'll do a bit of a summary of uh, fuel costs for the whole loop to date at the end of this. So yeah, I think we fueled up twice in November, yeah. but we kept, the, we kept the tanks pretty topped up before we came into Mobile. So boat maintenance, I'll probably let Chris talk more about that. I, we stripped out a lot of um, the numbers because we had a, an oopsie with one of the repairs but I'll let you talk a little bit about it. We, 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 I recorded $300 for this category, mostly because of the zinc cost. We replaced the zincs from what, magnesium to actual Yeah, so aluminum. under the maintenance so far, what, what's captured 
Uh, let me back up a bit. We we did an oil change earlier in the month in um, in um, Ayuka. At, Ayuka, and uh, and also at the end of the month when we we made it to Mobile, we pulled the boat out at Grand Mariner, and we did some maintenance work. And the primary reason for pulling the boats out was to do the zincs. And um, if I, we spent in the, of that three hundred dollars, I'm guessing about a hundred and hundred and fifty dollars of it was zincs. Um, we did a few other things. We repainted um, the bottom stripe, and we um, replaced one of the depth sensors with an N2K sensor. Um, and because of uh, uh, damage done while I was trying to change the zincs, uh, it was really unfortunate. I had to replace part of the bow thruster, and that was a big one. That was seven hundred dollars. So there's there's about a thousand dollars U.S. that we're not including because we didn't really think those were ongoing uh, maintenance expenses. I think was our reasoning. Yeah. Um, but just be aware that <laughs> you're going to have things happen to your boat, and you're probably going to want to account for it. It's you know it just. It, it adds up, so yeah. we're, we're staying a bit light on the maintenance cost just because we we didn't have to redo the stripe. We probably didn't have to do the depth sounder um, unit, a number of other things. Uh, we did have to do repack the shaft seal, that, that area. Oh, right. That was part of that cost as yeah. well. That, that was a trivial cost. Yeah. I think the, the new packing was 20 $30. Bucks. Um, but yeah, this category, though, just, you know, make it go up mentally add double it triple it whatever because this is by far the most um unreliable uh, un you can't really estimate what this is going to be any at any time because yeah. anything can happen and and we're certainly not the only ones um i know uh other other boats have had damage to props dam damaged shafts da um engine work um dinghy replacement there's there's you know replacing uh, anchors that got lost in the river there's a lot um, that I've heard of happening to other people so um, your experience may vary but I have a feeling you're going to be doing some sort of maintenance and extra work yeah. from damage so the YouTube category for November is $281 and that represented me replacing all the equipment that I broke coming down the rivers so that's the uh, mics that we're using and a set of mics for a different camera, and also a, a new tripod head. Our, our gear thing that I was quite proud of that was mostly plastic broke, so I replaced it with a, a higher quality metal one. So I had ordered those ahead of time. They were kind of waiting for us when we got to Mobile, so we started. We were able to start using them almost right away. So interestingly, <clears throat> with, um, with the money that we've earned from ad revenue, which hasn't been much from August, it's been about $400. I'm basically keeping up with breakage, which is kind of nice to be able to do that as well. So the next category, which I'll let, well, it's the other category, and this would be Nashville and New Orleans. So we did two side trips by car to Nashville and New Orleans and rented a car, hotel, eating out, and then whatever else we did when we were there. And that was, did I already say what it was? $1,150. That was both trips? Both trips or 800 because I use booking.com and I get good deals on things. So, so, um, 839 American, uh, tipping seven Canadian, five American, you know, when we came into some of these marinas on the rivers, we mostly had to dock ourselves because lots of boats were coming in all at once. And sometimes we had a little bit of help and then people would disappear, but mostly loopers were helping loopers as we came in, uh, laundry 30 American, 34 Canadian, uh, just really inexpensive laundry coming down the rivers. I think it's just a sign that the communities are smaller and they just charge less. So our, our grand total this month in Canadian was uh, just under $5,000, $4,952, which works out to about $3,600 American. And um, then that takes us over to our averages. So I'll pop up the averages for each category up in on top of us here, but I'll just talk really briefly about the overall average. So to date, for loop costs for five months, Canadian is about twenty six thousand dollars, twenty twenty five seven, and if you average that over five months, it's just over five thousand fifty one fifty seven. 
If we were to maintain that average for the remainder of the year, we will hit a total for a year of 61,879 Canadian. That's quite a bit less, obviously, in American. Um, but about 19,000 spent so far in American. Uh, if we were to maintain that, about 45, 46,000 American for the year. So that is it for the budget numbers. We expect that in December, the dockage fees will be a little higher to start with, although $30 a day for being hauled out isn't too bad. Um, we left the boat for a while in, in uh, Pensacola while we went to Georgia, so that's some dockage fees there. And what else is coming up in December that's a little bit bigger? Oh, the actual hauling out of the boat, the cost to do that, we were charged in December. So there'll be a bit higher costs, I think, in December. Yeah. Right, so fuel. You want to talk about fuel consumption? So um, this is just a recap of fuel costs from the beginning of the trip. So um, essentially we started looping beginning of July, um, last weekend of um, June, realistically. And, um, and I'm taking it to when we uh, filled the tanks up, in, uh, the diesel tanks up in Pensacola, Florida. Panama City. Sorry, Panama City, Florida on the 21st of December. So um, between those two points, so essentially from Midland, Ontario to Panama City, we've gone uh, about 2,014 nautical miles and that it, about 325 engine hours. Our total cost of fuel for all of that is is about two thousand five hundred and twenty dollars. Is that American or Canadian? Canadian. That's American. The Most numbers I give you are Canadian. Oh, so it must so be Canadian. it's Canadian. Okay. It's Canadian. So these are Canadian numbers. Uh, twenty five hundred dollars in fuel, and uh, that's that's about five hundred and ninety three gallons of diesel. So I worked it out as a nautical miles per gallon of three point four, which is lower than what we estimated the first time, but I still think that's a good number. And then if you don't like working in nautical miles, in miles per gallon or statute miles per gallon, however you want to say it, that's about 3.91. So, I mean, approximately we're talking about four miles per gallon. And um, yeah. That's pretty good, isn't it? We were told to at the top end, we could expect about four miles per gallon and it could be anywhere two and a half at the low end so <clears throat> it seems to be really good to me and uh, I'm, I'm quite happy with that number so far. So this may change once we do, you do the numbers after you cross the gulf because you're running pretty fast and hot coming across the water. Well I ran a little bit faster going across the gulf but only uh, usually we, we've been running now pretty consistently lately 1600 RPMs when I did the Gulf Crossing, which isn't included in these numbers because that happened after our fuel up in uh, Panama City. I ran at about 1700 RPM. So there'll be a little bit of a fuel loss there, but, and, and again, that's 220 st statute miles. So that's like 10% of our trip so far, yeah. just on that one leg day crossing. So pretty significant. One 27 hour day crossing. Yeah. So anyway, pretty happy with our our fuel numbers yeah. so far I you know yeah. of everything I think um, coming back to those maintenance costs they've been pretty high for us pretty consistently yeah. it's interesting I was talking to Daryl about it while we were doing the crossing and he said you know when you know buying a used boat in the first year you can expect to spend 25 percent was the number he threw out of the cost of the boat just upgrading and replacing and that kind of thing and if you look at it that way, you know, we've still got money to burn. <laughs> yeah, so, I don't know about that. so there's, you know, there's a reality to buying an older boat. Yeah, it, I think is what I'm saying. And, um, you know, we've put a fair bit of money into making that older boat livable. And yes. it, it's all been worthwhile. But, you know, there's been some pretty big dollar yeah. items. So what's coming up next? We are headed out tomorrow down the coast of Florida. We're going to take it easy heading south. We have to make some arrangements about where we're going to leave the boat for 10 days when we go back to Toronto. Um, 
we're going to be speaking at the Toronto International Boat Show on January 20th, 24th, and 28th. So if you're Canadian, maybe we'll see you there. Uh, we are also trying to figure out what that means in terms of where we keep the boat and how we get back to Toronto. So we're going to be working on that in the next couple of days. As we start moving south, we're planning on trying to anchor as much as possible. Uh, there's a number of reasons for doing that. One, we actually like the solitude of an anchorage, even if there's other boats around. It's a little bit less, you know, on the dock. Uh, being in marinas are nice. You can go into the cities, whatever, but um, you put up your 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 um, blinds and there's that other boat right next to you. So uh, the second reason we want to anchor a little bit more is we recognize that our docking costs are a big portion of what we spend and it's now gotten more expensive. Now we're up into the 3 350 range per foot whereas we were in the 150 to $2 foot range. And thank goodness we have a short boat because everybody else who has longer boats are paying a lot more too. So that's basic, the basic plan moving forward. And beyond that, I really don't know. Just want to thank everyone again who's donated to our coffee page. Uh, we really appreciate it. We, um, if you haven't already, you can join and just follow along there. We don't really expect people to um, join and then have to donate, but we try to post a few pictures there. Probably doing a bit more of that. Can you think of anything else? Happy New Year. Happy New Year. It's now December 30th when we're filming this. Yeah. So, happy 2024. Oh my God, can you believe it? Yeah. Pretty well. All right, see you next time. We were young and we were free and running. Sand, sand everywhere. Yeah, it was just 10 day. degrees warmer, I'd be out here in my shorts. Every day we danced and life was smiling. We were young and drunk in love.